Dear saints in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Death is an enemy, a fearsome, dreadful, devastating enemy. There are some people in the world today, like the people who advocate for euthanasia and medical assistance and dying and all these kinds of things, who would like you to believe that death is your friend. But the Bible tells us that it simply isn't true. The Bible is clear. Death is an enemy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, for example, the Apostle Paul says, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Death is an enemy. In this enemy, death, is one that we're all going to have to face someday. Actually, it's an enemy that we all end up facing at multiple points throughout our lives. We'll all have to face death personally when we reach the end of our own life in this world. When our time to die comes, we'll have to face this enemy. But we also face this enemy every time someone that we love dies. As long as we live our lives in this world, death, this dreadful, fearsome enemy, is constantly around us, is lurking around every corner. This isn't, of course, the way God intended things to be. God didn't create a world in which his creatures would have to face such a dreadful enemy throughout their lives at every turn, day after day after day. But this became a reality when we sinned and rebelled against God. When Adam and Eve, our first parents, ate the fruit from the tree that God said, don't eat from that one in the Garden of Eden. When they rebelled against the God who created them and who made them. When they rebelled against the God who had himself given them life. The terrible, tragic, dreadful result was that this enemy, death, became an enemy that we would all have to face at various points and at various stages throughout our lives. And so as we make our way through this life, we are constantly surrounded by death and we will all at various points and times end up staring death square in the face. Thankfully, however, our gospel reading today teaches us that we never have to face this enemy, death, all on our own. In our gospel reading today, we heard about Jesus having three conversations with three different people who each, in their own way, were staring death in the face. Three conversations with three different people who were all, in their own way, staring death in the face. And now, as we take some time to think about each of these three conversations, we will see how Jesus has compassion for us in the face of death. How Jesus gives hope to us in the face of death. And even how Jesus gives life to us in the face of death. Now, the first person in our reading today with whom Jesus talks and who is staring death in the face is Martha, one of the sisters of Lazarus. But we're going to, for the time being, skip over Martha, and we're going to start now with Mary. We'll come back to Martha in a minute. But we're going to start with Mary and her conversation with Jesus as she stares death in the face. Both Martha and Mary, these two sisters, they're staring death in the face because a third member of their family, their brother Lazarus, has died. Martha and Mary, they're both Christians. They both believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior whom God has sent into the world. And they both asked Jesus to come and to help their brother before he died. But now that their brother has died, now that Lazarus is dead and buried, they're both staring death in the face, both Martha and Mary. And Mary, in particular, is distraught. When Jesus finally makes it to Bethany, the village where Mary and Martha live, where Lazarus used to live, Mary can't really even seem to work up the strength, the energy, the willpower to come out and meet Jesus when he gets there. 
And when she does finally make it out to come talk to Jesus, her pain is clear for everyone to see. She says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary is staring death in the face. And this terrible, dreadful enemy is crushing her as she stands there talking to Jesus. But notice what Jesus says to Mary as she stares death in the face. Better yet, notice how little Jesus says to Mary as she stares death in the face. Jesus doesn't lecture Mary about why there was other things he had to be doing. He couldn't get there in time. Jesus doesn't preach a sermon to Mary here about why it is that he didn't come and save her brother and why it is that she should be happy that he's in heaven now, you know, or something like that. No, Jesus doesn't say any of those things. And he doesn't really even try to cheer her up either. All that Jesus says to Mary here in this conversation is, where have you laid him? Where have you laid Lazarus? Where have you laid the body of your brother? And then he goes to the tomb, to the place where they've laid him, and he weeps. He cries. What we see here is the compassion that Jesus has for those who are staring death in the face. Jesus is present with those who are staring death in the face. He's present with you when you are staring death in the face. And he, who is God Almighty in human flesh, weeps with you, cries with you when you stare death in the face. You never face death alone. And Jesus, who is always with you, doesn't delight in the death of anyone. Death, our great enemy, is Jesus' enemy too. And he weeps, Jesus does. When he sees the way this enemy hurts us. So that's the first thing we learn here from these conversations with, with which Jesus has with people who are staring death in the face. We learn that Jesus has compassion for us when we're staring death in the face. Now we can go back to Martha, to the first of the sisters with whom Jesus talks. Unlike Mary, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming into town, she rushed out to meet him right away. Her initial words are quite similar, identical actually, to what Mary said to Jesus just a little while later. But Martha has a bit more to say. Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That's word for word what Mary would say in just a few minutes. But then she goes on. She says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Like Mary, Martha is filled with grief at the death of her brother. Like Mary, Martha wishes that Jesus would have come sooner and stopped this whole thing from happening. But Martha's words here show us that she has a, a flicker of hope, a flicker of hope that Jesus can still, somehow, some way, do something for her brother, do something for Lazarus. And as Jesus talks with her, as Jesus talks with Martha, he fans that tiny little flicker of hope into a flame. He says to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha says, yeah, I know my brother will rise again on the resurrection in the last day. That's when he'll rise from the dead just like the rest of us. But then Jesus doubles down. What Martha said is true, of course, but Jesus isn't talking about the last day. He's not talking about some distant day off in the future. He's talking about the present. He's talking about that very day. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Now, these words that Jesus spoke to Martha in the face of death are the same words he speaks to us in the face of death. When someone we love is dying or has died, or when our own death is drawing near, 
Jesus says these same words to us, I am the resurrection and the life. And he promises us that whoever, whoever believes in him will live, even though they die. He will raise their bodies from the dead. And that everyone, everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. They will have eternal life. We have two things going on here. The resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And Jesus promises both to you. These promises are both grounded in the cross, in the cross where Jesus went and did battle with death for us once and for all. Jesus on the cross stared death in the face and defeated death for you. But here's the thing. It wasn't just for you. It wasn't just for some small group of people like you, and it wasn't just for Martha and for Mary and for Lazarus either. No, it was for everyone. That's why Jesus can say, whoever believes in me will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus' death on the cross, the payment that he made for our sin, the death that he died to undo our fall into sin, it was universal. It was for everybody. And this means that the promise, the hope that Jesus gives in the face of death is equally universal. It is for everyone as well. Whoever believes in me, everyone who lives and believes in me will live. They will never die. I will raise them up on the last day. And with that, we can now finally come to the third and the final conversation which Jesus has in our reading today with someone who is staring death in the face. We talked about Jesus' conversation with Mary and the compassion that Jesus has for us when we're staring death in the face. We talked about Jesus' conversation with Martha and the hope that Jesus gives us when we're staring death in the face. And that leaves only one more person to whom Jesus talks in our reading today who is staring death in the face. And that person is Lazarus. Lazarus, of course, is dead when Jesus arrives in town and has been in that state for four days already. As a result, he doesn't come out to meet Jesus when Jesus arrives in town. And as a result, he doesn't have anything to say to Jesus in our reading at all. It's a very one-sided conversation. Dead people don't say much. But this doesn't mean that Jesus has nothing to say to Lazarus. Jesus comes to Lazarus' tomb. He weeps outside of Lazarus' tomb with Mary, just having finished his conversation with Martha about being the resurrection and the life. Then Jesus prays. He prays out loud to God, his heavenly Father, that all these people who are gathered around, all these people who had come out of the towns and villages to be with Mary and with Martha in the grief as they mourned the death of their brother, that all of them would believe in him when they see what he's about to do. And then he says, Lazarus, come out. And notice to whom he is speaking. He's speaking to Lazarus. He's speaking to the dead man. He's speaking to the man who's been dead and buried for four days already. He's speaking to the man whose flesh has already started to decay and whose body is probably already emitting a pretty foul odor. Jesus speaks to Lazarus. He says, Lazarus, come out, and Lazarus comes out. Jesus gives life to people who are staring death in the face. Jesus gives life to people who are staring the dark, dreadful, ugly, foul-smelling face of death, who are staring right into that face themselves. And what Jesus did for Lazarus, speaking to his body, his dead body, and calling it up from the grave, he will do for you as well. Jesus will again stand upon this earth, his own two feet bodily, standing upon the earth, and he will speak to you, to your dead body, long dead and buried it may be. He will speak to it and he will say to you, he will say your name and he will say, come out. And you'll come out. 
because the Son of God who created you, who knit you together in your mother's womb, who formed your body and gave you life, is not going to let that enemy, death, have the last word over you. He will raise you from the dead. And he can be sure of that because he himself is risen from the dead. He did battle with death for you on the cross. He stared that enemy of yours square in the face and destroyed it there on the cross. And then three days later, he walked out of the tomb himself. Risen from the dead to all eternity. Risen from the dead to raise you from the dead. To raise you from the dead and give you life in a world where that enemy, death, is nothing more than a distant memory where mourning and crying and pain are no more because all those former things have, been pa have passed away because sin is no more because your enemy, death, has been destroyed forever. Death is an enemy. A fearsome, dreadful, devastating enemy. But Jesus has compassion on us as we stare death in the face. He gives hope to us when we stare death in the face, and he gives life to us when we stare death in the face. And as a result, we can boast over death. We can boast over death because death, this enemy, has got no power over us whatsoever. We can boast over death just like the Apostle Paul did. We started out this morning, I quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to you. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Just a little bit later in that chapter, this is what the Apostle Paul has to say about death. He says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.